How's it going guys, Chris here, and in this one we're going to be running over all the different enemy types that first appear in Chapter 2 of Black Myth Wukong. So the second chapter of the game takes you over to Yellow Wind Ridge, which just so happens to be infested with a load of angry rats, with probably the most common variant being the soldier, your typical cannon fodder bad guy resorting to close quarter combat. These rats put up a tougher fight than their wolf soldier counterparts in Chapter 1, armed with stronger spear type weapons along with some pretty hefty shields to aid them in fights. These shields can bash you around in between those spear lunges and slashes, while also providing a fair bit of protection from your own attacks too, essentially having its very own health bar which needs to be whittled down first in order to dish out the damage on the rat soldier itself. You can still injure and even take down the rat hiding behind that intact shield by flanking around the sides and giving him a good whack in between his own attacks. Though breaking the shield is going to leave him extremely vulnerable and wide open to getting slapped all over the place, with them being so reliant on it for defence. Just like those pesky wolf archers over on Blackwind Mountain, the rats also have their very own long range variant too, though instead of using bow and arrows, these guys have been given powerful crossbows instead. They'll fling single shots and volleys of bolts at you over distance, chipping away at your health while often being in annoyingly hard to reach areas, perched high up in buildings or along the tops of cliffs. Those crossbows are surprisingly ferocious, with their bolts travelling quicker through the air than the wall's arrows, meaning that they're going to be even harder to dodge and react to, which can be especially problematic when they're assisting other enemies. You might need to resort to twirling your staff around more to deflect those fire projectiles, though with these archers also being able to throw bombs at you too, this gives you even more of a reason to hate them, so you'll probably want to deal with them sooner rather than later, being one enemy that's probably going to wind you up. The Rat Governor is another enemy type that generally prefers to take you on over range. These wrinkly looking rats are the elders of the pack, which can charge up electricity using a magical staff, which can be shot out in beams and pulses nearby, zapping anything that gets hit. This inflicts thunder damage, temporarily adding a status effect, which puts you in a weakened state open to taking extra damage, complementing the Governor's attacks while enhancing the attacks of other enemies that fancy joining in the fight. Although this rat tends to stay back a bit, usually trying to blast you away from a short distance, he can still be fairly dangerous up close too, as that staff is still an ideal weapon for bashing you around with. You'll obviously want to avoid getting hit by anything while under that shock status, maybe even choosing to use some shock quelling powder to nullify its effects, which might not be a bad idea if you get yourself surrounded. Having two heads and the body of the Hulk, the Rat Captain is easily the most intimidating rodent variant, towering over you while brandishing a huge deadly sword. It's no surprise that these guys generally prefer to overwhelm their opponents using raw power and brute force, charging into combat head first while violently slashing and bashing away with their arms and weapon. And it's pretty clear that these guys know how to fight too, combining leaps and rolls with their attacks to try and throw you off rhythm. They do have that captain status at the end of the day, making the other rat soldiers look like amateurs. But to complement their aggressive nature, they're also skilled in the art of fire breathing, having flamethrower breath to burn the crap out of anything that's nearby, even able to set their sword on fire, just in case that sword wasn't already nasty enough. And you'll definitely want to stay out of the way of any coal dust they blow out too, as that can be ignited, turning the whole area into a fireball, including yourself if you're nearby. One enemy that switches some of that strength for extra agility is the Rat Imperial Guard, a highly mobile variant with a swanky red gown who uses a lot of fancy spins and fluid combos. This is all down to the Rat being able to dual wield blades, which goes pretty well with its divid strikes and lunges, hopping around and being able to cover fairly long distances quickly, by leaping through the air to deliver rapid swiping attacks as they switch past. All of this movement forces you to stay on your toes and get ready for the Guard's next chain of inevitable blade slashes as it jumps in and out of combat to both deal damage while avoiding it, making them slippery things that can sometimes be awkward to hit, especially when they decide to throw ranged attacks into the mix too, lobbing their blades over distance to try and catch you out in between those melee strikes. Looking like some sort of rejected Pokemon idea, the Pitstone is quite literally just a giant walking rock. It might look a bit funny, if not slightly creepy being decorated with all those skulls, but don't let those looks fool you, as the Pitstone can still be a pretty dangerous enemy to run into. Having a pair of super strong legs lets it not only bear the weight of all that rock, but swing it around, charge forwards and even dive over distances to brutally crush its opponents into the ground. Having to pick itself back up after a fall though will take a fair amount of time and energy, letting you rush in for a quick melee combo before it has the chance to flop back down on top of you again, or smash you around with one of its several slam attacks. 
They're not the fastest things in the world, but they can still chain together some impressive body slam combos, which you'll need to read properly to avoid becoming a pancake. Another similar enemy to the Pit Stone is the Pale Stone, basically another big rock that sprouted a pair of legs, only this one looks like it's been to the jewellers. With the top of its stony head being covered in pointy quartz crystals, this makes those slamming attacks all the nastier, because if getting flattened isn't bad enough, you're also going to get stabbed to bits by all those spikes on the way down too. The Pale Stone doesn't just rely on crushing melee strikes though, as those quartz crystals can be blasted out towards its victims too, showering around the area in front of the creature, chipping away at your health if you don't get out of the way in time. It'll combine both the slammy and the shooty attack styles together, giving you even more to think about, with that spiky rain covering a fairly wide span. Though possibly the most interesting variant of these rock enemies is the Poi Stone, which basically just looks like a shrunken version of the Pale Stone with slender feminine legs, but acts in a very different way during the fight. Carrying a lot less weight means that the Poi Stone can move around faster and leap even further through the air, generally having more aggressive traits while still having the ability to rain down those sharp spines on you from above. Being nimble yet destructive is an effective combination for the Poi Stone in close quarters, but that only becomes more apparent when you shatter the creature's quartzy body, as although it might seem like the fight's over, it's only really just heating up. The legs of the Poi Stone will reanimate, and now being free from all that hefty stone, we'll just casually run around trying to kick your face in. Considering you're now just fighting a random pair of legs, these legs are actually pretty savage, able to throw in some gnarly combos, along with some sneaky drop kicks too, for good measure. Though arguably one of the more annoying creatures, which mainly just acts as a means to wind you up while you're fighting other enemies, is the Blaze Stone, which, despite having a cool name and looking like some sort of hellish demon, is actually one of the easier creatures to defeat, if you can reach it that is. These guys just sit around spitting projectiles at you over distance, sort of following a similar role to the archers, only with their attacks being much slower and more telegraphed, with them charging up individual shots, which can simply be dodged or deflected. If they're on their own in a low down spot, they're practically sitting ducks just asking to get slapped, unable to move, giving away their position by firing those dust balls at you. If they're high up or assisting other enemies though, then the blaze bones can be a bit more irritating, so you're often best taking them out earlier rather than later, before they make a fight more complicated than it needs to be. Something that's going to put up much more of a fight though are the Spearbones, the priests of Windrest who basically proclaim themselves as the leading generals of the area. It's easy to see why they think of themselves so highly, being powerful warriors and with massive spears and shields, outmatching a lot of the other standard enemies you'll come across with them generally being tougher targets to take down. When intact, that shield can enhance the Spearbones attacks being used to bash and bowl you over while providing some really good protection from your staff, with it pretty much blocking off their entire body from your strikes. And unless you can flank around the spear bone to deal damage, you'll usually need to contend with that shield first and foremost, though a few charged up heavy attacks should be enough to turn it into splinters. With their protective barrier gone, the spear bone's going to be much more vulnerable, also being limited to the attacks it can use, now only having that spear to strike with. It can still potentially be lethal of course, but it'll at least make the rest of the fight more simplistic having more predictable combos that are much easier to avoid. The Swift Bat is another fairly tough contender that might cause you a few issues along your journey, being a much more agile enemy type, able to glide around and dish out the damage as it swoops in for the kill. These guys look like they've been chugging down on the blood of some roided up bodybuilders, being a hell of a lot more brawny than your typical vampire bat, and having such a muscular physique means that they don't actually need any weapons to batter you around with, rushing in with some close range beatdowns while still being nimble enough to retreat making them pretty awkward targets to lock down and return the favour. Gliding attacks aren't the only thing you'll need to watch out for here, with the Swift Bat also prone to flinging rows of sharp spikes in your direction too, as they jump into the air, making them fairly versatile enemies which can be deadly up close and from a distance. But something that probably won't cause you too many issues along your journey is a shambling zombie creature, literally just called a withered corpse. Even their name suggests that these things shouldn't be taken too seriously, as although they can sometimes give you a bit of a surprise when they decide to seemingly pop up out of nowhere, you can send them back to the grave in no time at all, being very weak enemies that clumsily wave their arms around like drunk people playing Wii Tennis. Being such feeble creatures means that they need to employ other tactics to try and catch you out, playing dead and rising to attack if they notice you wandering by, assisting other tougher enemies that happen to be in the area, or even just trying to overwhelm you with their numbers, in typical zombie fashion. They might manage to get a few slaps in if they're lucky enough, but most of the time that's usually the only danger they pose, and if you actually happen to get killed by one of these things, then you've got every right to feel a little bit embarrassed. 
Now, what are the smallest enemies you'll come face to face with in Chapter 2? Are the Weasel Captains, which can be feisty little things, though are generally easy enough opponents to best in a fight. These weasels are prone to ambushing you near the Windseal Gate, stalking you as you wander on by, only for them to lash out with quick sword swipes using acrobatic manoeuvres with their attacks. Being such weak creatures, they'll rely on their extra speed to catch you out, using dashes and spins, diving backwards to avoid getting hit themselves. Though if you manage to get one cornered, then that weasel's not going to have a great day, with a few whacks of your staff usually being enough to take them out. They might have that captain status, but they're not exactly something you need to worry about, at least compared to those nasty fire-spewing rat captains anyway. Though a very similar enemy to the weasel captain is the Civic Sergeant, a much more violent creature with an evil red glint in its eyes. Don't let the size of these guys fool you, the Civic Sergeants are savage little buggers, they don't exactly have tons of power on their own, but can very quickly hack you to pieces, while working together in the dark cellars underneath the Crouching Tiger Temple. They each do wield a pair of huge knives, having rapid strikes and relentless flurries, even able to lob them at you over distance, making the civets even deadlier from afar. They're just about as sprightly as the weasels too, relying more so on speed than durability, so you should be able to tackle them fine enough on their own, but maybe not so much if you get overwhelmed by their numbers. So as you'll probably know from the first chapter, not all of the plants in the game are what they might seem, with some revealing themselves to be nasty creatures that want to climb up from out of the ground and punch you in the face. The Lingzeeling is a new one that gets introduced in Chapter 2, basically being a tall purple mushroom guy with a load of fungus growing out from his head, armed with a long melee weapon to bash you around with in close quarters. He's got quite a lot of far-reaching attacks, with those lunges and spins being able to hit you over a good distance, and considering he's just a skinny plant guy, he can soak up a surprising amount of damage too, rewarding you with a bunch of mushroom ingredients upon his defeat. So if you enjoyed the guide, then please drop us a like and comment for the algorithm, that would be much appreciated. And if you want to see more on Black Myth Wukong, including the game's bosses, then make sure you subscribe and check out those videos on my channel. Thanks for watching guys, have a good day, and I'll be seeing you in that next one.